Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansky. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic, to base entertainment. When we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we have a pretty interesting show for you guys. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, as all of you are aware, there's this big back and forth going on uh, between Shannon Sharp and Kwame Brown. It's all centered on some comments that Kwame Brown made after the Lakers got eliminated. To paraphrase what Kwame said, he essentially said that uh, LeBron, if he's that guy, he needs to be able to get off a shot at the end of the game. He was talking about LeBron's inability to basically establish a go-to move in situations like that. And he said great scorers, once they get to their spots and they rise up, they can shoot. Kwame, I believe, also did something. He committed the cardinal sin. He put LeBron, Michael Jordan, and Kobe Bryant in the same sentence and implied that both Jordan and Kobe were better than LeBron at something, which activated all of the LeBron James worshipers to come out in droves. This is essentially what happened. So I, I, I'm not sure if Kwame Brown was aware of that, but that's exactly what he did. And one of the biggest supporters... I, I don't even know if it's support to call what Shannon Sharp does. I don't even think that's support. That's beyond support. That's like, that's like, that's like a fanatic. Um, Shannon Sharp got a whiff of what uh, Kwame Brown had to say. And he went on TV and said what he had to say about Kwame. We all know this, right? We all know what he said. I don't need to regurgitate what he said. I'm sure all of you guys heard what he had to say. So then after that, Kwame Brown made a response video way he was in his car he was driving somewhere he was kind of like in a white uh shirt and the response video is about i would say about 27 to 30 minutes long and towards the 15 to 17 minute mark because i was listening to it in the background kwame started to say something he started to say that if you look carefully that a lot of folks in media that talk sports and in this case basketball are being influenced to say nice things about LeBron now you see it's one thing if I have a hunch it's one thing if you have a hunch it's another thing when a former NBA, a former NBA player that that was within the system that understands exactly how the media interacts with the NBA that would be privy to some of the various agencies that represent certain media personalities. Um, it's something if he's saying it, that's something totally different. So what I want to, what we want to do here is we want to play a quick snippet or quick audio rather of what Kwame Brown had to say is only less than a minute. And I want you guys to play close, pay close attention uh, to some of the things that he had to say here. And then we're going to come back and react to this comment. Take a listen to what he had to say here. But you better let that be the last time you talk like that, you dummy. Because that don't make no sense. And all it did was expose you. All it did was expose how emotional you are. You are a fanboy for LeBron. And that's all you are. Most of you got emotional analysts are only up there to say good things about LeBron. That's it. Everybody. Ain't, ain't, a, that, ain't a, a real person that watch basketball don't know that there's a whole network of analysts that's just paid to say good things about LeBron. We can look up where who managed you, dumb We can look up and see that most of you are managed by Clutch Sports, who has a direct tie to LeBron James. So way to expose yourself, to yourself, Shannon Sharp, you little fucking fan boy. So you heard Kwame Brown's statement. Let me tell you why this is upsetting and maybe you know maybe it has to do with the fact that maybe i'm naive you know maybe i'm naive maybe i'm naive maybe that's what it is maybe in fact no maybe it's my naivete as they say uh that's really a play here and in fact because i'm naive it's causing me to get upset and if i wasn't naive i wouldn't be upset at all my basic understanding about sports media and cultivating an audience is simply this. Number one, <laughs> you're supposed to work hard. 
to build your audience. A lot of reps, and you're going to face a lot of disappointments, but you keep working hard. You maintain your integrity throughout the process. And number two, at the core of you, you're supposed to be saying what you actually think, what you truly, truly believe to your audience. Do you know why? Because if you're if you're someone that basically says things to people that you don't believe, then you're like a con man. That's a con man. You're a con man. You go around saying things you don't believe for a nice little nickel. That's what con people do. Con, con men do. You know, there's no integrity in you. Money moves you. Money sways you. You can be bought. You have no integrity. You have no integrity whatsoever. When I say that Kobe Bryant is my favorite player of all time, I'm not saying that because I'm connected to the estate of Kobe Bryant. I'm not saying that because Nike sends me a check. I'm not saying that because the agency that represents us influences me to say that. I'm not saying it because somebody sends me $25,000 a month to say that. I'm saying that because that's what I believe. And I'm willing to debate you. The other thing I think is important is your track record. You go find anywhere on the internet where you ever heard me saying Kobe wasn't the man. And then all of a sudden I started saying he was the man. You go find any videos on the internet. Go look through our library. We've been on YouTube for four, four years now. You go find any videos of where I said Michael Jordan wasn't the greatest player of all time. Go find the videos. And then I just all of a sudden started saying he was the greatest player of all time. Go find the videos. Go all the way to the videos that we were producing in 2020. And you tell me where you saw, or 2019. Hell, 2019. You tell me where you saw me say that. You see, moral consistency means something. Or at least it ought to. It ought to. And what Kwame Brown is essentially saying is that a lot of these people are just up there saying it's to make money. You're just saying that to make money. Which makes you a con man. Which makes you a con man. A person of integrity says what they believe and stands on it. Jordan Brand has never sent me a check to say what I say about Michael Jordan. Never have. And I never will ask for one. I'm saying what I think. I'm supposed to be beholden to the audience. Nowhere, anywhere can you find a comment on any of our videos where it said, oh, this guy said that he's only saying that because somebody's giving him money. Go, sh go show me the video. Show me the video. Show me the comment. Last year, we got 250,000 comments. Pull up one. Last year, we got 250,000 comments on our channel. Pull up one comment where you ever heard anyone say that about me. Pull up one, just one, not even two or three, one. If this is true, it's sad. Because it essentially means you have to cook the books to win. You can't win the right way, so you got to go the other way. We got to confuse people. And it makes sense what Kwame's saying. You know why? Because there's a lot of incongruities in some of the things that these people are saying, and I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. Let's start with Shannon Sharp. An article was published on the Sports Rush Dot com. This article was published on July 11th, 2021. The headline of this article read, God, Air Jordan, Kobe in that order. When Shannon Sharp held the Lakers top two behind, the Lakers legend top two behind Michael Jordan in his all-time rankings greatest basketball players of all time god air jordan kobe in that order go lakers march 11th now i want you guys to pay attention to something some people say oh he changes his mind no you're an idiot you're a gullible fool 
You're an idiot. He didn't change his mind. You're an idiot. And I'll prove it to you. If you listen to any of Mike uh, Shannon Sharp's recent Michael Jordan rankings with Kobe, he has Kobe like a nine or eight or something like that or nine. Do you guys know the reason why Shannon Sharp decided to drop Kobe Bryant? Do you know the reason he did that? Well, apart from the reason why what Kwame implied. Do you know the reason he did that? Do you know what his, his reasoning was? He said, I don't understand. I, there's no way a top, there's no way a top five player of a sport can only have one regular season MVP. That's what Shannon Sharp said. He said, there's no way a player can be a top five player in a sport with only one regular season MVP. Here's the problem. When he made those comments, he made it in 2011. Kobe had already won five championships in 2011. So Shannon, let me ask you, why didn't you realize that he only needed one regular MV, uh, regular season MVP in 2011? Lies catch up to you. Lies catch up to you. You can even go find quotes, tweets of Nick Wright saying one thing, then saying the other thing. I don't believe none of you dudes. None of you dudes, I don't believe you. Do you know why? Because most of you can't even say what you say with a straight face. Number one. And number two, most of you guys have lousy arguments. Lousy arguments. Lousy arguments. Very lousy. A person that I really like, that I really, really like, Chris Broussard, who I really like. And if Chris Broussard, if you ever see this show, I really like your content. But there was something that you said I disagree with. You said on Ticket TV show when he went on there for about an hour and a half. And Chris Broussard said that, because Chris doesn't believe Kobe's a top five player, if I'm not mistaken. He said that he believes if LeBron had played with Shaq, LeBron would have won, they would have won more championships as a duo than they did with Kobe. I'm calling cap on all of that. 100% cap. And I'll tell you why. Respectfully, Mr. Broussard, because he's, he's somebody older than me. LeBron's game did not compliment, would not compliment Michael Jordan's, uh, uh, Shaq's game. It would not work. If LeBron and Shaq were teammates, they may, they may get one championship. Two, it's highly unlikely. Three, it would never happen. If you watch Shaq, in his playing style, under the coaching of Phil Jackson, they would barely get one. The offense was ran through Shaq in a triangle. And you had players like Rick Fox, Derek Fisher, Kobe Bryant, and others that could play off of Shaq, but that could also post in the case of Kobe. And it could have two triangles at the same time. And Kobe's game complemented Shaq's perfectly because of his ability to shoot to spread the floor. In the case of LeBron, when has LeBron ever won any championship ever with a dominant big man? Ever. That wasn't relegated to becoming a jump shooter. When? Anthony Davis is Anthony Davis basically became a pick and pop player. LeBron plays, LeBron needs a certain style or he needs a certain uh, 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 cast of players, supporting cast to win. Because LeBron's game is predicated on attacking the basket. There's no way it would work with LeBron and Shaq when Shaq was clogging the paint. It just wouldn't work. There's no way it would have worked. No way. LeBron needs open lanes to hit shooters. And that means that even your fours need to be able to stretch the floor a la Kevin Love, who was relegated to a spot-up corner shooter who the year before averaged about 26 points and 12 rebounds and dropped to like 14 or 17 points, became a spot-up shoot. That was a power forward. Same thing with Chris Bosh. Same thing with Anthony Davis from time to time. And whenever AD is the predominant scorer, LeBron games suffer. 
games game suffers because he's now he's now relegated to be playing off the ball which he does not do well lebron needs the ball in his hand so how would it work with shaq given his playing style and shaq's playing style in a triangle offense with phil jackson how would it work it would not work they would barely get one championship kobe's game works better with shaq kobe's games work works better with bigs because Kobe doesn't need to space the floor. He himself was a spacer. Go look at the numbers. But if what Kwame Brown is saying is true, and I believe it is, then I can't take none of you dudes seriously. And I think and, and I think you guys are kind of missing the boat here. You guys are not realizing that this thing is changing under your feet. But y'all think what you think that what? What you think? That, oh, People are going to be constantly tuning into TV. I just heard a report from Patrick but David just yesterday on value tainment, talking about how people's tastes are changing. The only people left on TV are old people. The younger people are no longer on television. You, so wh where do you think they're going? And on the internet, on YouTube and stuff, it doesn't work that way. YouTube is not going to censor you if you're putting out great, high-quality content. You're not running around slandering people. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. So the conversation will change. And it will not matter if, oh, so-and-so is influ influencing you to say such and such thing because it's not one platform. It's not just, oh, the FS1 platform or the ESPN platform. On YouTube, everyone can have a platform and it's up to the creator if they're good. So this message eventually will die. No lie gets to live forever. But if what Kwame Brown said is true, man, then, uh, well, we just know who's who. And I mean every single word. If you feel offended, then unsubscribe. But I know most of these people that feel offended will not. They will probably not subscribe, but they'll be watching. They know themselves. They can't help it. They can't help it. These are my thoughts.